Welcome to Theory of Pets. I'm a passionate pet owner with a drive to help others like me uncover the truth about the pet industry and what goes on behind the scenes. Hey guys, I hope where you are, it feels like spring. Today it is a balmy 37 degrees where I live in Maine, which is not good for anything. It's too cold to go outside, but the snow is melting and everything's all muddy. So I hope you live somewhere where it's warm and you can get out and enjoy the sunshine and the outdoors with your pet. Um, Spring is coming. I am told the weatherman keeps telling us that spring is on its way here in Maine. So I'm thinking spring. That's me. I'm always an optimistic. And I'm thinking spring with my dogs. We have had such a long winter. We got tons of snow here in Maine. We had some brutally cold days. It was too cold to go outside. So I've noticed that my dogs have packed on a few extra pounds. I've noticed that I have packed on a few extra pounds. And I've been thinking about ways to get out and be active with my girls. We have a chocolate Labrador named Sadie. And we also have a little beagle Cocker Spaniel mix named Molly. Um, We are avid hikers and we do a lot of hiking with our dogs in the summertime um, or the spring and the fall as well. So I wanted to think of today, this morning, I was kind of brainstorming about other ways to get exercise with my dogs. And I thought, you know what, this is a great topic for a podcast because I'm sure that a lot of you have been cooped up. You kind of have the winter blues. It's time for spring. We're all getting really excited for it. So let's talk about it. Different ways to Engage your dog, get them active, keep yourself active without having to really go out of your way. You know, that's the biggest thing that I hear from a lot of pet owners is that you, I I just don't have the time. One of the things that I always say is, you know, you make the time to walk your dog every day. Most people do. Um, Or you, if you have a lot of property, you make the time to take your dog outside and, you know, make sure that he goes to the bathroom. The easiest thing that you can do is just extend that time. Take a little longer walk. Spend a little more time outside in the yard. It shouldn't take a whole lot of effort to rearrange your schedule and get an extra 10 minutes here or 20 minutes um, in your day in the grand scheme of things. So move your schedule around, do whatever you need to do, get that extra 10 minutes and spend it with your dog. One, it will foster that bond that you have. It's going to make him happy. It's going to make you happy. Getting outside, it's a proven scientific fact that being outside in the outdoors, in the sunshine is a mood booster. It's a mood booster to be around your pet. So, you know, take that time, spend it with your dog. What could be better than that? You know, some people even, maybe you're listening and you have a cat that you take for walks. I have seen it many times cats on a leash spend the extra 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes you know play with them engage them in the yard if that's what you do or you know if you take those daily walks just extend it a few minutes longer on each side and you know you're going to end up spending that time doing something probably not very productive anyway throughout the course of the day. So whether you, you know, drink your morning coffee a little bit faster or you decide to spend a little bit less time on your cell phone, playing a game, whatever it might be, uh, less time on social media, you know, take those 10, 15, 20 minutes and just extend your activity with your dog. Another great way to foster the bond between the two of you, and one of the things that I am so looking forward to doing is using your dog as a training partner. And this is so easy. It's so hard to find the motivation sometimes to exercise. What better motivator than your dog? What better training partner than your dog? They're always excited to be around you. They're always excited to go and play and run or do any kind of exercise with you. It makes them happy. So of course that's going to motivate you if your exercise partner is motivated to do things and they're happy and they're excited, you're going to feed on that um, and that's going to be great. There are tons of things that you can do with your dogs. Um, A lot of people, you know, will just run, walk, jog, bike ride, um, whatever, you know, you would do anyway normally. But there's other things too. If you want to try something brand new, there's tons of sports that dogs can – 
participate in that you can help your dog participate in. Things like agility, um, dock diving. If you live somewhere near the water, that's a popular thing in the spring, summer, and fall. Um, another great thing is that's becoming more and more popular is called uh, Daga, and it's yoga with your dog. So it's great, again, to foster that bond, but it's also really great because, um, you know, it's a great exercise for you in your body and your overall health and well-being. And if you can – Bring your dog into that. Of course, that's a win-win for everybody. Um, Another thing that I love doing, uh, like I said, it's pretty chilly here still, but if you live somewhere where the water's warmed up, get in the water with your dog. Dogs love to swim. Swimming is a great overall exercise for humans as well. If you're not big into swimming, there's so much stuff you can do on the water with dogs. I have seen dogs riding kayaks and canoes. I've seen dogs on paddle boards. There's a lot of ways to interact with your dog and involve the water. I know I love the water. I love being around the water. Diving is a great thing to do with dogs. Um, If you don't necessarily want to get in the water yourself, just walk. Be near the water. You know, let your dog go swimming. Maybe throw a floating toy out there for him to fetch. Water is a great place to go with a dog. Usually most dogs like water, not all of them. If your dog doesn't like the water or uh, if you aren't a big fan of the water yourself, uh, look for some stairs. A lot of communities have stairs um, and stair running is really great. If there is um, maybe a stadium in your area that allows people in to exercise on the stairs, uh, a lot of communities will have staircases, you know, up hills and things like that outside. So you can do that. Um, You know, don't overdo it on the stairs. That's a big thing. Don't exert yourself. Not a lot of running or anything like that. Just walking up and down the stairs is a great exercise. Um, Another great way to engage and interact with your dog um, this time of year is to play some games with him. Work for treats or a toy, whatever his uh, favorite thing is. You can play games to one, it engages your dog. It keeps him from being bored. It's mentally and physically stimulating for him. It's also fun for you. I love playing hide and seek with my dogs. They are really good at it. Our beagle, obviously, she's a uh, got a very good nose. Our Labrador as well. So um, nose work works really well for them. I hide treats and they can find them. If you start small, you know, start with something easy. Do a little bit of research on nose work with dogs. I've actually written an article on our sister site, Top Dog Tips, about nose work for dogs. Um, And it's pretty simple. You start out, you know, let your dog see where you're putting the treat or the toy um, under a box or behind something, you know, let him see it and then he'll seek it out and then you can reward him for doing that. And then you just get harder and harder. Uh, you can start inside where there's not a whole lot of uh, activity going on or anything that's going to distract him, different smells, things like that. And as he gets better at it, you can work your way up to going outside. Uh, for me, that's kind of where we're at right now in the spring. We're doing things inside, and slowly as the weather gets better, we'll move outside. Um, there are some other great games to play, too, that um, a lot of pet owners find really enjoyable with their dogs. Um, fetch, obviously obviously is great tug of war um, you can play brain games like hide and seek as I mentioned there are a lot of games that dogs really excel at some some breeds especially like frisbee um, as I said you know dock diving there's certain sports that dogs are really good at agility um, if you don't have anything in your area some dog parks have some uh, agility equipment and that's great but if you don't you can make your own agility equipment for dogs there's some fantastic DIY tutorials online YouTube has a bunch um, you can buy some really inexpensive stuff as well if you're not into the DIY thing so uh, agility is one of the things that we love doing it's as much fun for me to be honest with you as it is for my dogs I not only is it fun for me because I'm engaging and interacting with them and it's just fun to see them do different things but I try to get creative with it I try to see what my girls can do and I love that I love experimenting with the differences between the two dogs um our little beagle she's she's smaller obviously than our lab but she can jump higher and she's actually uh, really speedy so seeing the differences between my two dogs trying to figure out ways to harness both of their strengths and um, work with them to maybe help them with some of their weaknesses it's really 
I don't know. I I don't know what the word is. Not productive, but um, it's really engaging, I guess, for me. And it it is productive. I feel like we're doing something. We're not just wasting our time, you know, hanging around inside. We're not just going on a plain old walk that, you know, is going to get boring for all of us after a while walking the same route over and over. But it's something that really stimulates me and the dogs, both mentally and physically. I get out there in the yard with them. You know, it gives me some motivation. I guess um, thinking about oh we have to go for another walk again you're walking the same route on the same road or the same street the same sidewalk the same hiking trail that you go on every day you know that sometimes isn't all that motivating especially when the weather's not really nice but you know if you have something like agility you've been working on things you want to test things try things be creative with it um, you know that's something that that never gets old for me I've Uh, gotten into agility with multiple dogs that we've had in the past and uh, every dog's different so it's always an adventure you know with every time we get a new dog Um, but even you know dogs that I've had for eight and ten years we're doing new things all the time that old saying you can't teach dogs old dogs new tricks is not always the truth Uh, so keep that in mind especially when it comes to agility And the other thing that I wanted to mention too that's a great way to get some extra exercise and burn off some of that winter weight is just socializing. Get out and socialize. Whether you, you know, there's so many places now, public places that allow dogs. So whether you go to a public park, you go on a hiking trail, um, you might go to a dog park, you might go to, um, you know, a local Um, restaurant or shopping center that allows dogs, you know, that's a great way to get out. And, you know, that's engaging as well for you and your dog. You're socializing with the owners, they're socializing with dogs. um, And that's a great way, obviously, to get out and about and and be active. Um, It's a nice way to kind of wear off those winter blues. You can meet some new people. Your dog can meet some new people. Um, This is especially great if you're traveling and you want to maybe just, you know, you don't know anybody and you want to maybe meet somebody to to hang out with and spend some time with so you're not all on your own. Or um, if you've recently relocated to an area, you know, dogs can be a great conversation starter. If you're out walking around somewhere where there's other dog owners, odds are when your dog matches up with a dog and they start playing or um, you know you walk by a, a pet owner and they compliment you on your dog or you compliment them on their dog it's really easy to get a conversation started like that so um, that's another thing that I always recommend to pet owners you know it's spring it's time for new things new adventures get out there find things that you like to do find things that your dog likes to do um, when the other thing that I always talk about when I talk about exercising with your dog is to know your dog and your dog's limits. You know, I mentioned agility and and um, that's a really good example because there are different activities that you can do as in the agility field, uh, whether your dog's young, old, big, small, it doesn't matter, but you need to cater the activities to your dog's needs. So my girls, like I said, we love to go hiking. Our, our chocolate lab will be three in June. Our Beagle Mix just turned two. They're both young. They're both very active. They're both in great health. They don't have any kind of, you know, hip or joint or bone issues that we worry about with them going on long hikes. So it's not an issue for us. But for some people, you know, for some pets out there, it's just not going to be feasible to go, you know, hiking for four or five miles. It's not going to be feasible to have um, a challenging agility course in your backyard, dock jumping, catching a frisbee, that kind of stuff. It might not be something that your dog's interested in. You know, if your dog isn't a, a big fetcher, Every dog loves to walk. They love sniffing. They love, you know, checking out new things. So maybe that's more your dog's speed and that's where you have to to match him. You know, I think a lot of us, we try to get dogs that match our lifestyle and our personality. Um, But for example, you know, we have where my me and my husband are both in our 30s we have young children Um, we have two young dogs right now two young and very active dogs that mesh very nicely with our family 
But in 10 years, we're going to have two old dogs. Uh, my husband and I are going to be in our 40s. We're still going to have, you know, kids that are teenagers. And um, we're still hoping, hopefully, obviously, we'll be active and healthy and we'll want to get out and do things. But, you know, when you have a dog that's older, sometimes you have to cater to what they need. And um, so maybe you're still capable of hiking 10 miles in a day, but your dog might not be. So take his needs into consideration. If you do have questions or concerns, um, maybe about his physical ability, his health um, is, you know, for example, a short hike going to be okay for your dog with arthritis. Talk to your veterinarian about it. Uh, they, they'll they know your dog's specific case um, and they'll know whether it's going to be a good thing for your pet, uh, agility, you know, things like that. If you're thinking about being competitive in something like agility or dock diving, um, it's always best to have your dog checked out by a veterinarian before you, you know, really get too seriously into it so keep your dog in mind too Um, like I said I know I've packed on some winter weight I'm ready to get out there I'm ready to get active but um, I have to think of my dogs too and and the same goes for all of us Uh, even though you might be ready to get out and about and really hit the ground running with you know either weight loss or a goal to be healthier or you know you just want to be out in the summer sun that's all great Uh, but just keep your dog in mind of course right now it's spring uh, so we're not thinking about super high temperatures but it won't be very long before we are and keep that in mind as well the weather always plays a factor when you're exercising with your dog if it's too hot it's not going to be comfortable for your dog you can sweat you can drink water you can eat a popsicle you can do lots of things to cool off dogs don't have that same ability they can overheat very easily so uh, be paying attention when the weather gets warmer and uh, the other thing you want to do is just check the forecast make sure there's no rain or anything like that that's going to um, ruin your your adventure, whatever it might be. I hope you guys enjoyed some of these tips that I'm sharing with you. Um, like I said, I've just kind of been brainstorming different things that I want to get out and do. So I thought I'd share them with you guys. If you guys have any uh, tips or activities, exercises that you like to do with your dogs, feel free to share them. Our website is theoryofpets.com. I'd love to hear some comments from you guys. Um, please reach out if there's something that I didn't mention that you know is a big thing that you enjoy doing with your dog if you have tips for pet owners because you know maybe you're an avid paddle boarder or kayaker and you bring your dog you know give us your tips let us know what do you have Uh, I'd love to hear it I know everybody else would as well if you jump on our website theoryofpets.com there is a section there to leave me a review on iTunes I would really appreciate that when I'm reaching out to experts in the pet industry if you've listened to my podcast in the past you know quite frequently I interview experts in the pet industry and when I reach out to them it's a lot easier to show them that you guys are listening and you're leaving great feedback and you love what you hear Um, that makes them want to come on the show and of course um It makes my job a lot easier. So if you could jump on iTunes and just leave me a quick review, I would really appreciate that. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast episode. And like I said, if you have any tips you'd like to share, feel free to do so. I will be back with another show very soon.